Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Equestrian Perspective podcast. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2023. I'm really excited for year. This will be the third year of the podcast. So I can't believe that we're already entering our third year. It's just insane to me. I wanted to keep a bit of a tradition that I have going, um, which is reflecting on the year. And I also normally do a, a year reflection around the time of my birthday, but September was a bit of a Uh, an interesting month for me personally. So I wanted to kind of weave in the lessons from the year that I would normally share around my birthday here and sort of do a bit of like a year review and also tune into what's to come next year. And I feel like this episode is going to be really relevant for you if you're interested in learning about the lessons that I've learned over the past year and also listening to some of the reflections I have um, regarding my intentions that I had set for the year and how that all went. Um, So yeah, let's dive in. So what I wanted to start with is every single year on the first of the first, um, I write myself a letter as if it's already been, like as if it's already the, the next year later. Okay, so on the first of the first 2022, I wrote myself a letter which I read on the first of the first 2023. Okay, and but I wrote the letter as if everything that I wanted to happen over the year had already happened. So I was really kind of like planting those seeds and setting the intentions. Um, and I read the letter. And if you're interested to hear about the other letters that I've written, um, listen back to the other reflections I've done in the past around this time of year on the podcast. Um, but 20, Felicity, who wrote my letter on the 1st of January 2022, was very ambitious, um, <laughs> but love her for that. So um, I definitely didn't achieve all of my goals. Um, so like, I want to read, I want to read part of the letter to you because it'll just like give you some um, ideas if you're looking to write something like this for yourself or you're just wanting to kind of tune into like the energy of the way I wrote mine. Um, this is how I started it. So I just wrote, life feels so fuck. Oh, no, I didn't say fucking, but maybe we'll add it in there. Life feels so perfect right now. Everything just flows towards me with such ease and joy. I feel like I've cracked some universal code or something and it feels so fucking good. And then I wrote, I'm extremely proud to say that. And then I listed off all of these different goals. So I was talking about the property that I'd manifested, where I was living and how amazing it is and how much I love it. Now, don't have the property yet, but bring on 2023. It's happening. (laughs) So excited. Um, I also wrote down that I've sold like thousands of copies of my book and I was feeling amazing about it. Now, do I have a book yet? No. Had I planned on writing a book? Yes. Now, the reason I didn't end up writing a book was several reasons. Like I went to start it and it just didn't feel quite right. I felt like there was more pieces to add. And then as I went through the year, it's interesting whenever you get met with resistance, often like there's always a reason it's just at the time it feels really annoying but then when you look back it's like ah that makes sense so as I was learning more through 2022 I've like come across more pieces that I would add to this particular book that I um, was planning on writing and I haven't decided whether I'll definitely write it yet I think I will but I'm just keeping it open at this stage Um, but it's just interesting to reflect on like if you have a creative idea in mind or a project in mind or something that you want to do just trust the timing of that thing and even though it feels like you're being met with setbacks it might be like part of the divine plan to give you all of the pieces that you need so that when you do do it it's perfect um i also wrote down that the podcast has like hundreds of thousands of downloads which it doesn't yet right but i'm i'm getting there like the number of downloads is compounding i'm so grateful for you guys i'm so thankful for you all um, and it just makes me so happy to hear that people are benefiting from the words that I'm sharing on the podcast and the guests that come on the podcast. So I really appreciate you guys being here and getting what you get out of it. It's really makes me so happy. Um, I also wrote a financial goal down, which I didn't meet either. Um, but once again, like I, I'm getting there, I'm on the way there and it feels really exciting. And it's interesting being in this place of in the past, I used to set these really big goals And if I didn't achieve them, I would be really hard on myself. And I would be really like, oh, my goodness, like you failed, like feel really disappointed, all the things. Whereas now I'm like, instead of being like, oh, like I didn't meet it, like woe is me. I'm like, I didn't meet it. However, here's why. 
And here's what I did do instead in that area. And here's how things have shifted or here's what happened through my life um, instead because alongside all of the things, all of the goals I wrote down, there's other things still happening around that that aren't even included in this list. So it's just cool to kind of reflect on those pieces. So I just want to say if you're someone that's being a little bit hard on yourself for perhaps not achieving the goal that you set out to achieve, like look at everything else that you did achieve, both from a tangible, like, things that you can see perspective and also an intangible perspective of like, who is the person you are now? What beliefs have you shifted? What things have you healed? All of these types of things, because they deserve some airtime too. And it's really important that you take some time to kind of reflect on those things and celebrate that. Um, I was also talking about how my launches for the Confident Equestrian Program just keep filling effortlessly with the most perfect clients And yeah, I definitely had more of a flow over the past year in terms of like launching that program and like incredible clients coming into that program. Like I just feel so blessed and so grateful for the people that enter my world. Um, And yeah, that that feels really, really good. I was talking about how I've been featured in like horse deals and online in-person events and like been on all these podcasts. Um, I was on the We Horse podcast. I was interviewed on another podcast. Um, I can't remember the name of the podcast, but I think it's Feline Therapy. I think that's her name. Um, she runs a podcast, Morgan. She's incredible. Um, and I also did um, some collaboration stuff with Celeste, Celeste Lazarus with her masterclass. Um, I also had an article in the Equestrian Life magazine. So yeah, there were a few kind of different features there, which feels really exciting. Equitana was also on in Australia and I was kind of kicking myself that I didn't like be more forward thinking about going to that and having a booth there and things like that, but that's okay. Next time. Um, I was talking about the mindset course that I put out at the beginning of the year and how it's a huge hit. Now it didn't blow up like I anticipated it to. However, um, it still impacted a lot of people and I have some more ideas around how to put things out there and shift things and change things. And yeah, it was just a good learning opportunity. Um, I wrote that Norton and I are engaged and I love my ring and we're so happy together and we did get engaged. However, typical, I forgot to wear my ring on this video. So if you're watching on YouTube, I don't have it on, but we did get engaged and I love my ring um, and we're really happy. So that's exciting. Um, I also wrote down that I love my body and I'm doing 10 chin-ups and I move daily. Now, this is one area where over the past few years, I've just like struggled to get back into a solid like movement routine and like a strength training routine. Um, I used to like lift weights and like do chin-ups and all the things. And it's just kind of like subsided over the past few years, sort of ever since COVID kind of came about. Um, because I find it very easy to focus on my business and helping people and all the things. Um, So that is definitely an intention for this year to really build up my strength. And um, yeah, I'm excited for that. Um, What else? I wrote down, this is really interesting because I was like, oh, I love spending time with the horses and it's really cool to see Lily in her new perfect home being loved to pieces. And she transitioned transitioned under saddle beautifully so for those of you who aren't aware Lily is the chestnut mare she's a small Galloway that I have in my photos on social media and things like that she's the mare that I'm predominantly riding um and I ended up buying her so she initially was with me for training she's a friend uh, a friend bred her um but then I ended up being like I can't part with you so I ended up buying her so she that kind of did come true. She does have the most perfect home and she's loved to pieces by me, not someone else. Um, I wrote uh, that Bruce is loving going for walks, which he does, spending time in his huge paddock. Now I was writing this as if we were at the new property, um, but he's he's still um, happy and feeling pretty good. Shorty's good, Um, all the things. What else? I wrote down that I was like writing, I had bought a warm blood and I was writing this warm blood, which I don't have yet, but who knows what's to come. Um, what else? I wrote down that I manifested some amazing in-person friends, which I did, which is incredible. They're some of like my favorite manifestations. And I wrote down that I hired a VA, which I did, um, spend more time with family, which I think I did do a bit more of over the past year for sure. Um, and I wrote down that I've incorporated energy healing into my work and it's made it even more transformative, which I have. And yeah, I'm super excited about all of that. 
And then at the end, I wrote, I've touched over 100,000 people and horses lives this year. Holy moly. Now, I'm not entirely sure how many people like it's hard to kind of put into context the like ripple effect I have when I think about the podcast and social media and all of the other things. So I don't know how many people I would have impacted. So that might be true. I just don't know about it. So I'm just going to claim it. So why not? <laughs> and then at the end, I wrote, you did it. Fuck, this is so epic. Um, so yeah, that was my letter to myself. So as you can see, there's like some pretty stretch, like big goals on there. Um, and I most certainly didn't like tick everything off, but I'm like moving in that direction. Or there were some goals that I ended up going, you know what, like not right now. I'm going to tweak and shift things. Um, but then there are also things that weren't on this list that I did achieve as well alongside the other pieces. So that was my letter. Now I've written down a letter for the year ahead um, that I'll open on the 1st of January, 2024. And I'm really excited for that. It's got similar sort of themes, but it's interesting because I've shifted from um, having a real focus on specific tangible things that I want to call into my life and more of a focus on flow um, and more of a focus on balance and sustainability and ease and just more of a feeling and just really enjoying my life on a deeper level. Um, so I love it. And the more that I allow myself to do that, the more that I can help my clients do that. And they're already doing such an incredible job with this. So I'm just excited to kind of take these things to the next level and just see how the year unfolds. But my mission at the end of the day is still all about helping horses become better understood. And initially, I'd always thought I would focus on the horse training side of things. Um, but now I can really see how... I love helping people as well and through helping people with their mindset and through energy work and all of those things and tuning into that intuition, that also helps me help horses become better understood because when people can trust themselves, sorry, my phone just went off. When people can trust themselves, then that just makes the connection that they have with their horses so much better. And yeah, it's just exciting to see how things flow and shift and evolve and who knows what is to come, but I'm really excited. I'm so glad that you're all here on this on this ride. And this year is all about kind of um, enjoying my life, going with the flow, and also spreading, like putting myself out there on bigger, in a bigger way, I, I really feel, um, because I feel like I've got such important work to share. And I just love helping people. And I love giving people like transformative results and life changes and I love seeing that with their horses too. So here's to helping people on a larger scale this year. And I'm excited to see what's come. So that's that. Now I wanted to go through with you some of the lessons um, that came through over the year. And now these are lessons, these are, I think I ended up writing 31 because I wrote down 31 lessons that I was going to do a podcast episode on around my birthday, but then I didn't because September, just, it just didn't feel right. For some reason. No, I know the reasons. It was just a flatter energetically, flatter energy month for me. I was reflecting on a lot of things, but these lessons are still very cool. So I'm going to share them now. So lesson number one is re your relationship with ease affects your flow. And like I continue to learn this lesson over and over and over and over again, but it's so true. Like your relationship with ease affects your flow. Like how comfortable are you feeling with things feeling easy? Or do you feel like things have to be hard all the time to count, you know? Um, because when you're in flow, things feel light, things feel effortless, things feel easy. So if you struggle with connecting with that energy, then of course you're going to struggle to flow. So I think that's really, really um, important. And I'm always met with like, oh, damn, I'm making this thing hard again. Why can't I just let things be easy? And then there's another layer of conditioning or something that needs to be healed to unfold. So perhaps you can reflect on that. Another thing is really tuning into like what it, whenever you say I am and then fill in the blank, like really be mindful because your words are ones. So whatever you call yourself, just remember that you're so much more than that thing. And if that thing doesn't have the energy that you want to carry forwards, you've got to change it. You can't keep saying to yourself, I am a nervous rider. I am not confident. I struggle with X, Y, and Z. I am like, stop putting yourself in a box because you're so much more than that. And you're not that all the time. 
even if you are at sometimes, you know. So really think about the energy that you bring to whatever you say after you say I am. And like, you don't have to go the complete opposite direction. Like, let's just say you like some confidence rather than saying like, I am confident and you feel like this is bullshit. You could just say, I am growing my confidence. You know what I mean? Like there's truth to that. So find statements that you can really like lean into. Um, another thing was just because you need something at one point in your life doesn't mean you'll always need it. Yeah. And it's really just about allowing things to shift, evolve and change. Because at one point in my life, I was like, I'm always going to be someone who needs external accountability, who needs a mentor, who needs someone to keep me going and, and, and all the things. Um, but over 2022, I learned a real lesson about like, when I tune into the way that I secretly want to do things um, and do things that feel aligned for me, I've already got a really solid foundation in a lot of areas now that I don't necessarily need to rely on these other sources to get me where I want to go, right? Now, that's not to say I'm going to be like that forever, um, but it was a real invitation for me because I kept on investing in things that I'm like, oh, I, I feel like I need this. And then I would do it. And I'd be like, I already know this. Like, why am I in here? Um, so it just it's just cool to kind of realize that sometimes you you think you need something forever and then you realize, oh, I actually don't. Um, so it's just like being flexible. Um, the other one was everyone has their own unique formula. So I think this is really, really important to kind of tune into because everyone has their own unique formula. It's likely that they're all utilizing the same principles, but they're putting their own flair on it and doing what feels right for them. So it's really just about owning the fact that you have your own unique formula and what is that for you in your life. Um, and it's going to have similar principles to someone else, but just because someone else is doing something, it doesn't mean that that will work for you. Just because you're doing something, it doesn't mean that what you're doing will work for someone else. Um, the other one was like, you just know far more than you think, right? And I, I think we sometimes need to give ourselves more credit than we give ourselves because there's so much knowledge that we have. And like, I am constantly mind blown when I'm like connecting with clients and then I like have other conversations with them. I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, all of these other things, like, this is incredible. Like, tell us, <laughs> you know? Um, and yeah, I think sometimes when you're lacking confidence and you feel like you need to get more knowledge or get more information or hire someone to like, hand, like give you the handholding that you're looking for, um, sometimes it might not necessarily be more information that you need. It's just you need to tune into your truth um, and remember that like, you know, and you can do this and you've got the information that you need. It's just about implementing it and taking things one step at a time. Um, and that's what I love guiding people through inside my Confident Equestrian program. So good seeing people recognize like, hey, like my, what I intuitively and logically was thinking about this thing was on point. I'm sure there's, there's tweaks to be made along the way, but like you already know. Um, the next one is we're far more intuitive than we realize. Yes. We're all reading energy all the time and we're all tuning into different things. We're all downloading pieces of information. We're all channeling like that's been really wild for me to kind of tune into and accept over the past year, but it's really freaking cool. Um, another thing is it's not a, it's not, um, a circle, it's a spiral. So whenever you think you're going around and around and again, you're like, oh my goodness, this lesson again. Um, you're not going around in a circle. You're not like meeting at the same point. It's a spiral. So you're like meeting it on a different level. And a friend described it to me. It's like um, you're in a multi-story car park. You Every level looks the same, but it's a different level. So whenever you meet a similar lesson, just know that you're not being, it's not the same lesson the way you had it last time. It's uh, on a different level this time. It's like an onion. There's so many layers. Um, the next one is context matters. Um, so like this was specifically the example I had was like with horse behavior, for example, like one horse might put their ears back and it's like focusing on the rider or a question. And another horse might be saying like, I it might be setting a boundary with a person or being uncomfortable or showing a pain response and that kind of thing. So it's just context matters with so many things and just like zoom out and look at the whole picture whether it's horse behavior whether it's a post you're reading on social media whether it's something that you're making assumptions about or you're unsure about zoom out and look at the whole picture because there's more pieces at play that are going to inform your hypothesis 
Um, the other one was another lesson. You only hear from those on either side of the spectrum, but those you don't hear from are the majority. Okay, so this was more referring to like, I know a lot of people that are like, oh, I want to go out and compete, but I'm not this like high level performer and I just want to go out and do my thing and have fun. But I don't really feel like there's many of us. And it's just like, there are so many of you, they're just not loud, right? You're only hearing from the people that are really loud, which are the people that are expressing their voice more at the top of that area. You know what I mean? And like the perceived top. So it's just recognizing that there's so many people in the middle, middle, or there's so many people like that are pure positive reinforcement trainers that are quite vocal. And there are so many people that are on the other side of the spectrum, just working with pressure and release and more traditional sort of training that are very loud. But there's a lot of people in the middle that you like to use a combination or like to um, blend things or work with them in a slightly more relaxed way. And that's all okay. And just because someone isn't talking about it as loudly, it doesn't mean that there's no one else doing it. Okay. Um, what else? Your focus on your growth is what creates the most change. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's when you're, you're tuning into like how you want to grow, what's the next sort of like evolution of you to explore what needs, what you need to tap into, like that's going to create the most ripple effects and the most change in your life. Um, the next one was really when you're going on this growth journey, like balance healing versus tapping into your desires. Because I think as perfectionistic type people, often when we go, oh, okay, I'm learning about self-development, there's all these things that I can heal and all these beliefs that I can shift and all of the things. Um, it's almost like you don't need to heal or go through every single thing, right? Um, and you might think you do in order to be perfect or be good enough because you have to go through everything, but it's just like not physically possible to go through everything. So as you're going on your healing journey, literally just live your life. The things that pop up that trigger you or that you want to look in deeper to, heal. But in other, other times, focus on your desires. Focus on where you want to go and let that pull you. Because so often we fear our desires and we fear where we want to go out of fear of disappointment or fear of whatever. But it's just like allow yourself to play and have fun and move in that direction because it doesn't always need to be hard. You can heal and have fun along the way, you know. Okay, um, another thing that I learned about was that the like mothering yourself. So it's really about like when you're having a moment, how can you mother yourself through that and be like be the kindest version to yourself ever? Like if you're having a moment, be like, hey, I understand. Like what do you need? Do you need a cup of tea? Do you just need to sit down? Do you need a hug? Do you need like you're doing an amazing job? Like really like mother yourself or if you want to best friend yourself, you know what I mean? Like, and just be like, what would, if someone I really deeply loved was going through this right now, like how can I give that medicine to myself? Um, the next one was like, trust your curiosity. So yeah, I love leaning into this. Like when I did the the course with Nikki Novo, all about reading energy, um, I was just very curious about it. And it's just interesting where your curiosity takes you. Um, and I, I love the rabbit holes it takes you down, even if you're like, I had no idea I was going to do this. Like, <laughs> it's just so interesting where you get led. So trust your curiosity. The next lesson was you don't have to force yourself to be a good student to something that doesn't align with you. Yeah. So this is referring to, I went to this like business event and every like it just didn't feel aligned to me the way that they were teaching and I felt myself wanting to be a good student and showing up and doing all of the tasks and trying to get it all done and it was like I don't have to do that anymore I'm an adult I can choose to say no I can choose to not show up I have paid to go to this thing but I don't have to do anything that I don't actually want to do you know like in in this context anyway so it's like don't force yourself to be a good student if it's not feeling right. If you're if you have a coach that doesn't feel aligned for you, don't force yourself to be a good student, you know, like find someone else because there's a reason why it doesn't feel right for you. Um, the next lesson is there's so many ways to do things. Like don't your don't allow yourself to be sold one way only. Yeah, totally. And that comes back to like what I mentioned before about you having your own unique way of doing things. Like the principles are going to be same across the board but there's so many different ways to do things. So just allow yourself to be creative. The next one was like the importance of really getting clear on your values and just really tuning into like what's important to you. How do you want to live your life? Like 
what what do you want to stand by you know like and carrying that forward rather than like absorbing someone else's values and kind of running with them because we're all unique we've all got our own unique set of things um and just really own yours the next one was channel it don't change it yeah so if you're this sort of came up in a CEP call um a client of mine Robin she was talk like we were talking about this and it's really just like if you have a horse with a particular personality or you have a particular personality trait that maybe you're like, oh, I wish it was a little bit different. Like how can you, instead of like focusing on changing that, how can you just channel it? How can you own it? And how can you be like, look, this is just the way I, way that I am in this area and I'm going to own it. I'm going to channel it. I'm just going to be all that I am. If you have a horse, it's a bit quirky or a bit like um, fresh or things like that. Like rather than making it bad, how can you just like, let that like own that about them and channel it um i really like that um the next one is how you see yourself is very different to how others see you totally like and isn't it trippy to think like we're never going to ever know how someone else perceives us i just think it's so interesting um and i think yeah it's interesting um because Whenever I see someone or like photos of someone, I'm like, oh yeah, that's that person. And they could be like a, 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 a more like visually appealing version, like photo of them versus the not so visually appealing, but still I'm like, that's the person, like they're amazing, whatever. But for ourselves, we could be so harsh and critical and be like, oh my goodness, what is all, what's all this happening? Whereas someone else would look at that and be like, oh yeah, that's just them. Like, <laughs> I hope you guys are understanding this, but it's just, it's interesting to ponder. Um, the next one was enjoying your life is the goal. Yeah. And like I mentioned before, it's my favorite thing to see my CEP students, my confident equestrian program students really lean into enjoying their lives and realizing the importance of that. And when you're in that, there's more of a flow state going on. Things with your horses are better. Things in your life are better. And there's not this pressure to reach an end result. And it's just so much more enjoyable and fun and pleasing. Um, the next goal, uh, the next lesson was all about tracking your cycle and listening to your body. Yeah. So it's just realizing like if you have a hormonal cycle, um, and for men, you have a 24 hour cycle for women, you have a, however long your, your cycle is cycle, right? So it could be anywhere from like, well, the standards around 28 days, but there's some variance there. Um, so it's really just the importance of like recognizing that we have different phases in our cycle where we're going to have different energy levels and being okay with that. Because I think when we're in the energy levels where we feel amazing and we want to go and do all the things and we want to put ourselves out there and ride all the time or work with our horses all the time and whatever. And then we get met with like the luteal phase or the menstrual phase. And we're like, oh my goodness, I have, where did my energy go? What is wrong with me? It's like, nothing's wrong with you. You're just in a different hormonal part of your cycle and your body is responding in accordance to that. So it's like rather than like beating yourself up for being the way that you are, how can you just own the fact that you're going to have different levels of energy and work with your body rather than against it? Just like we would with our horses, right? We're all about listening to our horses and working with them on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, how can we start to take that and do that with ourselves? Um, the next lesson was create the energy and then harness it. So I feel like this is really, really helpful if you're working or either horse, if you're working with a really sensitive, like sprightly horse, like create the energy of calmness and relaxation in you. And then like, that's going to invite them to harness it. And if you're working with a horse, that's perhaps a little bit more dozy and calm and chill. And you're wanting to kind of like energize them a little bit more and get them a little bit more responsive how can you create that energy in your body that they can feed off of? So I think that's a cool way to kind of look at it. And so you could incorporate some play into your routine and get them sort of in that play zone before you ask them to respond a little bit quicker. And they're going to have that energy to actually use rather than just like being zoned out and then not responding. <laughs> um, the next one is what's the way you secretly want to do it? So whenever you're thinking about things that you want to do, like what do you secretly want and what is the way you secretly want to do it? And that's your way. Do it. It's there for a reason. Just try it, you know. Um, your curiosity is like your intuition guiding you that way. The next lesson to ponder is what would you do if you weren't afraid? I feel like this is always a good question to ponder and just be like, hmm, 
what would I do if I wasn't afraid? Oh, I would do this, this, and this, and this, and this. And it's like, that's what you need to do. How can you start moving in that direction? Because you already know what to do. It's just doing it yourself or getting the support or the knowledge that you need to action those steps. It can be that simple. Um, oh, <laughs> the next one was a lesson about like horse rugs. So if you've got a, a combo rug where the, the rug and the neck rug are attached, if you want to prevent your horse's lower mane being rubbed out, just only do up the strap closest to their head. I did that this year with Shorty and his mane didn't rub out. So win-win because then when he puts his head down, he's not getting the lower strap on the neck rug, like causing tension around the bottom of his neck, which rubs his neck. It's more open because I've only got one strap done up. Win-win. Um, the next lesson was learn about your horse's hooves, although I'm still on that journey. So that will probably come into next year's lesson as well um, because I still have a lot to learn. And I'm by far from perfect. Um, the next lesson is just because someone's a professional, you don't need to take their word as gospel. Yeah, I think that's always important to tune into and just be like, okay, is this true for me? Does this feel aligned for me? And is this direction I want to go in? And do I want to be like this person in that area? And if you don't, then you don't need to take their advice. Um, and also it's so easy to label yourself as a professional. I feel like most people perceive anyone that they pay money to as a professional, but you could be more qualified or more knowledgeable than a lot of professionals, you know? So it's just really owning the fact that you have a lot to bring to the table and just be discerning with the people who you label as experts and just ask questions. Um, the next one is if you have an issue, get it, get it checked out. Yeah, totally. That was for me from like, I think I wrote that down from a, a personal health perspective. There was just something that was coming up for me and I just was putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And then I got it checked out. And it's just like, publicity. Like, why did I not get this checked out earlier? Like, that was silly. Get it checked out. So if you need to hear that, like you've got something lingering and you feel embarrassed about it or whatever, or you just want to like not entertain that idea, like get it checked out. If you need to get a support person to support you with it, like, it's better better to be safe than sorry. Um, the next lesson was the importance of energy protection and cleansing. Yeah. So when I learned about energy protection and cleansing, I was like, wow, this is what it feels like to be in my body. I had no idea what it feels like to just be in my energy because I was just picking up on so much other stuff and not like going through a process of just like grounding and being in my energy. So that was really illuminating. And I highly recommend like, look up some um, energy cleansing meditations um, and things like that to really tune into that practice. Um, the next lesson is the importance of clearing out energy leaks. So anytime you kind of like, oh, I should do this, or there's these things that I want to do, or just like a decluttering or whatever, do it because they just take up so much energy just sitting there because you know what needs to be done. And it's just like, just do it. Um, the next lesson is if you're not doing something, ask yourself, why don't you want to do it? Yeah. So if you feel stuck and you're like, uh, okay, I had planned on doing these things or I had planned on going, achieving this goal or whatever, if you're not doing it or you didn't achieve it, why didn't you want to do it? Because there's likely there's, um, you're gaining out of not doing it in some way. Okay, so it's about addressing that and doing the inner work to shift those beliefs so that you can more effortlessly move in that direction. And the last lesson is it's safe to be you and just own your uniqueness and know that no one else is you. No one will ever be you or know what it's like to be you and you contain your own set of unique gifts and talents and even if you don't feel like you do, just know that you do because you do and like everybody does um, and if you can see it within others you, it, that's within you too and it's just acknowledging like it's safe to be you and know that it's all okay so those are the main lessons I guess another lesson would be that I've more recently kind of tapped into since I wrote that list in September would be 
Another lesson would be the importance of like staying devoted to consistency and the things that you want to be consistent in in your life that make you happy so that you can enjoy the journey and have the life that you want to create. Another lesson would be around what else? For me, it's been around exploring my um, ability to tune into my emotions and just looking back at my past and not only my past, but also before I was born and really tuning into that side of things and doing healing around that's been really profound. Um, yeah, I feel like that's where I'm at, at the moment. So that's what I want to share with you guys. I hope you absorbed some of those lessons. I'm going to pull an equestrian oracle card for us all. Um, and yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for being here. I'm excited for 2023. If you're interested to know what's to come for me <clears throat> at this point in time, in the in early January, um, in a couple of weeks, I have my program Equestrian Essentials starting, which is essentially the first module of the Confident Equestrian program, all about understanding how horses learn. But instead of it being a course that you dive into and watch at your own pace, it's going to be run live which I think is going to be so potent. There's an incredible community of people that have already joined. Um, and there will be, of course, replays available. But I think the live energy and the ability to ask questions, to just really tune into the people that are inside that program is going to be so much fun. If you want to join, head over to my website. I've got another round of the Confident Equestrian program that starts mid-February. Um, and I expect that to fill up really quickly through January. Um, there's already eight people joined, 16 spots left. So if you want to jump in that, I would love to have you and teach you everything about understanding how to help your horse feel more confident in any environment and really empowering you with all of the tools that you need to support yourself on your journey with your current horse and any horse you interact with in the future and just really give you the tools so that you can enjoy the journey. There's a 12-week horsemanship course, weekly coaching calls, unlimited messaging support, all the things. It's incredible. Um, and I weave in horsemanship, mindset, energy work. It's the best. And the people that are drawn to this program are incredible. You will not regret it. Um, that's that. In the back end, I'm also running a program called the Intuitive Equestrian. So stay tuned to hear more about that if you're interested in developing more of your intuitive abilities and animal communication and energy reading and things like that. And yeah, I'm just really excited for what's to come. I hope to connect with you on a deeper level. Um, but yeah, other than that, enjoy and I'll see you in the next episode.